We know that this report was 3,000 pages long, so luckily I'm glad we have you here to give us some of the key takeaways, especially when it comes to the clean energy transition. Where do experts say we're at right now when it comes to this? I think it's actually worth breaking the question into two smaller ones, if I can do that quickly. From the perspective of 2012, everything is just unbelievably phenomenal. Nobody dreamed that between then and now, solar costs would have fallen 85%, battery costs down 85%, wind down more than 50%. Uh, that has led to a real revolution and a transformation from alternative energies to uh, what's now just energy. Uh, from the perspective of 2032, which is around the time we're expected to pass the 1.5 degree uh, increase mark, uh, it looks terrible. Uh, we're nowhere near as advanced as we need to be, despite having all of the tools necessary to do so. Well, let, let's talk about some of those uh, tools specifically, because I, I know, I mean, in the past few years, we, we've spent time talking about how the world is warming and warming, and we've heard from a lot of companies that they're, they're working on different measures. And so w what's going wrong here? What's not happening? There's not enough work being done. I think that's just it. There's, there's really one number that matters here, and it's the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, that number, which before industrialization was about 280 uh, parts per million, which is a sciencey metric of little value to uh, anyone uh, other than them. But we're now at almost 420 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, and the higher that number goes, the more trouble we're in. So uh, all efforts have to reduce that number. That is like the cosmic background radiation of every story, like our Pago story today. Um, there will be uh, on the road to clean energy, there will be incompetence and there will be failure and there will be corruption and there will be heroes and there will be saviors. Um, it's all just intensified by this uh, a simple but alarming backstory of the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. So where are we seeing things maybe go right, Eric? Where are things trending in the right direction and, and where are they not? Again, you put your 2012 hat on and it's there's just blistering change compared to uh, historical measures of change. The IPCC report that you mentioned uh, identified but did not name 18 countries around the world that have sustained falling emissions for more than a decade. Some of those countries have sustained emission drops of more than 4% of year, which would put them on track to achieve a 2%, I am sorry, I apologize, a, a, a two degree uh, uh, emissions consistent with a two degree world that's higher than the preferred Paris Agreement target of 1.5 degrees, but it shows real progress. Uh, the report did not name those countries. Uh, AP reporters the next day, uh, through some really clever legwork, uh, went through databases and identified uh, 19 countries that uh, are that meet those qualifications. And there are a lot of developed countries. Uh, the US is among them, UK is among them, most of Europe, Japan. Uh, so because of policies, because of the switch from coal to gas, uh, those are the kinds of things that are going to bring about progress everywhere. Why didn't the IPCC name some of these countries, Eric? I mean, if we're, we're trying to head to a solution, don't we want to know sort of where the work needs to be done? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and the, it's really a question about what the IPCC is and who runs it. And it's a collaboration among 195 countries. And while that's obviously the information that any reader of the report is going to want, uh, just the nature of this report as a collaboration of many countries means that in many measures like this, uh, and who knows how many others, they tend not to name countries just because it reduces the political temperatures in the room where they have to approve everything. But, you know, they did mention, as you said, that it is a lot of developing nations, which um, has sort of been mentioned in the past few years. What exactly did they say needs to happen uh, with these developed nations? Why is the focus so much on them right now? Because they're growing the fastest and they're growing in ways that are inconsistent with the global temperature goals. 
when you have so many people without modern energy, as India does, as many countries in Africa do, uh, you want to develop, you want to hook your people up, get them power and improve their lives. And the fastest way we know how to do that is through fossil fuels, in many cases, coal. That puts them uh, at a double disadvantage because not only do they have to now develop in clean ways that there are not as smooth uh, pathways for, uh, they're also on the front lines of climate change itself. Uh, the the uh, It's just a truism that the countries that polluted the least over the last 200 years are now on the hook for the most aggressive damages.